these are angel wing mushrooms. They're a bit old. Looks to be about two days too old. This is an edible mushroom that I leave alone. The Japanese enjoy this one, but it has a toxin which is mild. And if you have a healthy liver and kidneys, the toxin would pass through you unnoticed and be entirely metabolized and filtered out by your liver and kidneys. But if you have liver and kidney problems, this mushroom can be fatal since there's no way to get rid of that otherwise mild toxin. This one is a close cousin of the oyster. And if you know what an oyster looks like and you see these for the first time, you could well confuse them for the true oysters, Pleurotus ostriatus and the other Pleurotus mushrooms. But uh, it's thinner and less fleshy than the true Pleurotus mushrooms. However, there are better options in these woods and I'm going to show you some soon. Pigskin puffball mushrooms here. These are also a bit aged. You can see this one right here has burst and its spores have erupted out of it, but lots of spores still in there. You can see it coming out when I tap it. This is a mildly to moderately toxic mushroom, so it should not be eaten. It is ubiquitous, so it's unfortunate it's toxic, but it is one of the toxic puffballs. Here we have an emergence of the extremely beneficial turkey tail mushroom. And there's more right over here. On both sides of this log, literally thousands of them. They're not very big, but when you find them, there are so many that it doesn't really matter. The turkey tail mushroom is also known as the Coriolis mushroom. You can see because of the distinct bands of color. And on the underside, it's poured. It's not toothed or gilled. It has pores, and the pores are so tiny as to be almost microscopic. About 8 to 10 pores per millimeter. There's some bright, fresh ones, but they come in all colors. They could be red or gold or yellow, blue and red, blue and black, blue and yellow. I've seen many variations of the colors. Nature's really giving this autumn. I'm finding lots of ubiquitous witch's butter. This is nature's tofu. It grows everywhere, it's abundant, and it does in fact taste like tofu. Which is to say it doesn't have much flavor, but it's a good one to add to soups and stews to thicken them. Right over here, we have a vigorous emergence of laid oysters. The proper name for this mushroom is the Pandalus serotinus. It's a cousin of the oyster mushroom, not a true oyster. But it's thick, fleshy has a flavor much like the oyster and is an excellent comestible one of my favorite wild mushrooms and right up here look at this this log this log just keeps on giving that's a jelly ear in formation it's uh, another jelly mushroom very closely related to the witch's butter and it too is edible well I'm going to harvest a number of these turkey tails I put one or two in every batch of chaga tea that I make, and that increases the power of the chaga tea to be healing. And I'm also going to harvest these pinellus mushrooms here. And I see a more developed jelly ear right here. Let's take a closer look at it. <clears throat> I just knocked down a rotten log by accident. But looking at it, this mature jelly ear, you can see why it's called an ear. It's folded over a little now. But if we unfold it, you can see the rough shape of an ear that it takes. We have another mushroom emerging right here. This one's about six inches long. This one's about six inches long. You can tell by the scale of my knife. And this is an edible cousin of the jelly ear. Just another jelly fungus. All the jelly fungus are harmless. Most of them fairly pleasant to eat. Tofu-like. But, like I was saying, 
forests also produce toxic mushrooms. And right down there, we have mushrooms. Those look to me to be Lepiotis, which is a genus, not a species. I don't know the specific species. But many Lepiotis are quite deadly, possessing amatoxins, just like the Amanitas, the destroying angel, and the death cap. Look at the incredible green of this lichen. I do need to learn lichens better. This lichen's going a spore. You can see the red parts on top of it. It's so green. Some things to note when you're identifying the Pinellas. It grows in layers attached to one another, just like the regular oyster. Its cap has a greasy feeling, just like the regular Pleurotus oyster. It grows in a kidney shape or a fan shape. It can be anywhere from one to six inches in diameter, and it's thick and fleshy, also just like the regular oyster. It's densely gilled, just like the regular oyster. Its gills trace all the way back to the stipe, which is just a little stub, just like the regular oyster when it's growing out the side of a tree. In fact, in just about every way imaginable, this mushroom is just like the regular oyster. Let's go home, boy.